Uh, so we use random sampling because it basically tries to remove as much bias as possible and um, also uh, we hope to get a better representation of the population um, which we might not get if we use some of the other ones especially uh, convenience because that's really just for us we're trying to make our lives simpler um, most things probably get done that way in convenience sample because you know if they're they just mail out a whole bunch of stuff and hope people respond um, you know or you're asking people and you just kind of go there as it occurs like um, you go to the next house and if they're there they answer the phone answer the door um, or you try to ask somebody as they're going by you but um, so most cases we do convenience because because you know we don't think about it but you know you really should try to do as much um, uh, random sampling as possible so you can get better results um, I just kind of want to do a quick tour of the class and um, then I will probably um, do a little bit more explanation of the stuff but what usually the, the easiest way to um, learn math is to do math and since I don't know why I'm in that I wanted to be in this um, I usually will do the problems out for at least one of the problems of each type um, and then um, let you work on them um, I also try to show you as much of the how to use the calculator as possible but it doesn't seem to want to launch um, today which is you know been my computer's been acting all kinds of weird so Let's see if I can get this going. There's not a lot of, you know, people always worry about statistics and they, they're told it's hard. Um, one thing you need to know is that it's really, really not math <laughs> um, because you don't do any of this stuff by hand. You know, it's not like algebra where you solve problems. Um, you know, you're trying to get all the answers for and solve for X or any of your other math problems, math classes that you have. Um, we don't do that you know you're given a list of numbers and are asked to um, figure out information about them and because it is so much harder and time consuming to do the calculator does all the work for you um, so you just really need to make sure that you get the numbers in right that's your biggest goal and then figure out well where are the buttons that will help me um, Come on. All right. So uh, the syllabus. Um, there's general stuff in here. Um, what the book is, what you're supposed to learn. Um, do you need a calculator? Um, this teachers, every math teacher wants you to have a graphing calculator, um, but they're expensive. <laughs> so. I prefer to use as much free stuff as I can or in cheaper stuff so your um, phones all have uh, the ability to find an app for um, the calculator and it is I think it's the same on both I don't have an iPhone so I don't can't bring up um, the iStore, uh, but um, um, this Calc 84 graphing calculator, 
I believe was the one I came across that has, um, of course, it on my phone on me. Let me just go get it and I'll see if I can find it. Hold on. Okay, I'm back. Do, 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 do. Did I uninstall it? I did. That would be because that would be dumb of me. So I, I of course, I uninstalled it. I believe it's the Calc 84. Um, this is also on uh, the iPhone because my son has one, um, and that is a. It's like five dollars on Apple, um, and it's free, of course, uh, for Android. Um, but also, any of these work. Uh, the Wabbit. Emulator, which I'm trying to launch, um, runs on Mac and PC, um, as well as Android. Um, so that's what I use on my phone. Um, and it's free, so it looks just like your TI-84 you know, calculator. Um, but of course, then teachers freak out because you're using your phone in class, and they're like, oh, you're cheating. I'm like, no. You know, they should be able to use what they can afford. So um, other things, uh, there's a calendar. Um, this kind of lays out what's happening. So here we are today. Um, I just want you usually to watch the, the I make video. I made a video for each chapter um, going over it, the uh, um, kind of the highlights of each chapter and just want you to submit any notes and any questions you might have so I can try to make sure I cover them uh, this week. And if I don't cover them, you can always make sure you ask me. Um, and then the homework is due not the Sunday after, not the next day, but you have a whole week and then a Sunday. So if you, again, if you have questions about the homework, you can always ask me the next week and then, then they're due um, after that. You can turn them in late, but it takes points off, but that's it. Tests are always due on a Monday, so you have, and they're like a week, you usually have a week to do them. Um, you Each problem has a couple of days to work on them, like I mean, a couple of tries, so if you don't get it right, you can do it again. Um, i pretty sure I have still have it set up so that it drops the lowest test. There's a few tests. And if you have an A, you do not need to take the final. Um, so uh, there's four tests plus the final and a project. Um, so those four tests in the project, I'll drop the lowest one of those. And then if you, like I said, if you have an A, you do not need to do the final. The final is available today. Um, if you look in weekly work, it's at the very, very bottom. It's a big project about all kinds of stuff. Um, mainly using uh, descriptive statistics and inferential statistics and regression on um, climate change data from um, probably like eight years ago now. Um, but you know, you can work. You work on that alone. <laughs> uh, you can work together, um, like in groups of two. Uh, but like I said, if you're having a, then you don't have to turn it in. So that's nice. Um, we do have Thanksgiving. We will be here every week um, from uh, nine to noon, going over this ish. So each week has. I usually do this what happened thing in class because uh, you guys can all talk about it. Um, and of course, things don't want to load. Did 
just to get your brains moving because you know I know it's nine o'clock on a Saturday and people are a little sleepy um, and I appreciate that so you know the fact that you all can come is quite an amazing thing all right so this here is some data that's it you know I ask you guys to try to figure out what this data is all about um, then there's a link to the book each chapter um, this is uh, a link to the discussion board where you post your lecture notes here's the videos there's a couple of them they may be in there twice um, and then here's a link to uh, web assign which is where we do all the homework a link to the textbook page the textbook homework sections if you want to do more problems and um, pretty much every chapter every week has that same information in it um, where you're going to post your lecture notes you most of you got all that so excellent um, the collaborate button obviously this is where we're going to meet uh, your grades um, that seems pretty obvious the textbook is free online it's also um, here is a PDF don't print it out at the library uh, because it's 900 pages and they get really upset with you if you do that um, if you want to purchase it you can purchase it through Lulu it's like 20 bucks or you can purchase it from Amazon it's like 30 bucks um, and then here's the link to WebAssign. I was told it went up to now 3795 because it's owned by Sungage and they keep raising the price so um, but it's still a lot cheaper than the Troyola book, which every other class uses, which is like $180. So, so I, I think you're you you get a deal there. Um, trying to think what else is in here. Um, calendar, final grades. This is really all you care about. Professor, I have a quick question. On that page, you have the red book. I got the yes. yellow book. Yeah, the it's the same book. The, it's just the yellow book has um, is in color. The red book is all black and white and it's on print demand. It, that was came out first, and then um, they it was like it was owned by um, OpenStax. Open was owned by Rice, and Rice started this company called OpenStax, and then they decided to you know people to sell it you know in a printed version. So they started printing them and. Uh, sold them on Amazon. So yeah, either book, they're exactly the same book. Thank there's you. no, there's no difference in the text. Like I said, the only difference is, is that the graphs are in color. <laughs> so, <laughs> and it has a hardcover. So, they're, but they're exactly the same. Um, here's your grades. We have 15 weeks that we're here. We have uh, 13 chapters because, um, actually, 12 chapters. Um, we don't do chapter five um, because it is, requires you to understand uh, a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of natural logs. And because the prerequisite for this course is algebra one, they said, well, you can't teach, have, force them to know, uh, expect them to know natural logs. And I'm like, I don't expect them to know it. I do it with them and we just use it as a, to see the graph, but they're like, you can't do it, so we have to skip chapter five. Um, there's homework, there's tests, and then there's a final. And like I said, if you um, get an A, you do not have to do the final. So um, I think that's kind of it in here. Uh, Web assign is uh, the other part of the equation. Um, you, you start out with a two-week uh, trial, and you have to purchase it somewhere in here. Of course, I can't ever see that because I don't have student view. Like, I don't have a student login, and it's in the studio itself. Um, but it's, that's where you purchase it from. They have a couple of different options. Don't buy the unlimited one because uh, don't buy Cengage Unlimited, especially for the year because it's like $120. Um, they have their own web assigned version, which is cheaper and it's just for this class. Um, 
but they try to force you to buy the unlimited because it's more expensive. It's kind of like every other, you know, they hide the cheap one somewhere down in the bottom. Like when real player was the uh, player of choice, the free one was always a hidden little link at the bottom of the page because they wanted you to purchase it. Um, they still want you to purchase it here. Uh, so just make sure you're, it, you should be getting the, the 37.95 version versus the $120 version. Um, if you can. Um, any questions so far? No, okay. All right, I guess not. All right, I'll, have to, I'll keep flipping back here just to make sure that um, there's no questions. One, two, three, four, six, seven, eight of you. Hmm, what do the rest are? Um, because I have. So at one. At wood, Carbonaro, Chun. Dicky. Do we have to do the textbook homework? Uh, just the web assigned stuff. The uh, textbook is really just for extra help for you. Um, it allows you to have uh, more um, questions because uh, they took some of them. Um, if you look at the. Uh, And if you actually have the actual textbook, you'll notice there's even more questions. Um, but so, one, two, three, four. Uh, so there's a bunch here. Um, the web assign only has nine. <laughs> You know, they've kind of put some of these together as single questions, but the printed textbook obviously has even more um, pages of them. Um, so it just allows you to have more questions that you can go, I, I didn't quite get that. I want to try something else, see if I can figure it out. Um, so it's just extra places for you to, to do some of the problems. Okay. Um, All right. Let's go into this. My calculator is not turning on, but that's okay. I don't actually need it for today. Um, there's not a lot of math in chapter one at all. Um, it's basically counting. Um, and I'm pretty sure all of you can count, right? Can anyone not count to 10? Like you got all these things here. You know, so if you need to go forward, you can write something down. But really, that's it. Um, one, somebody wanted to know about uh, cumulative statistics, relative statistics. Uh, sorry, cumulative relative frequency. And that has to do with adding up to 1. And that has to do with the fact that it's fractions or percentages. and depending on rounding, you should get to one. You might get 0.999, you might get 1.01, .01, but you really, those both round to one, so you should get that. 
as an answer as for the last section um, because you're looking at all of it. You know, you're just saying the accumulation of all this should be 100%. So that's why it has to add up to one. Um, and the, calc the, the book is fairly good about that. It allows you to use fractions, especially if you get sevenths or 24ths or something that, that doesn't come out nicely. You can put the answer in as a fraction. Um, but if it's, you know, a nice simple, you know, thing like you're dividing by 25 or 50, uh, it, you can just put it in as a decimal and it will take that on, and it will tell you what thing it wants. If it wants a percent, it'll put the percent sign because it's going to come out neatly. So, um, so question one here is asking about the different types of things. Um, really, it, it's all of the vocabulary. What is a population? What is a parameter? What is a sample? What is a statistic? And what is a variable? And what is a data point? What are data points? So population is the whole thing. So the population can vary. Like you all here could be a population of the, but you're also a sample because you're a smaller port part of my class because only there's only like eight or nine of you and they're supposed to be 25 so you would be a sample but you are the population of everybody who has shown up today um for that was one of my cats i don't there wander through everything um you are the population of everybody who has come who has logged in so but most times we look at samples because we don't have populations um, to deal with. They're too big. So whenever we do this stuff, we're always going to use a sample because it's cheaper than asking everybody in the United States what they think. You know, we're going to ask a small portion of the pop of the, the people of the United States what we think. So the population is everybody, whatever it is that they're looking at. So here, a ski resort. Is interested in the mean age of children that of when children take their first ski or snowboard lesson. So the population is has to do with children, and it has to do with children who are taking a ski or snowboard lesson. So those are the things that you have to look for. I mean, here it's the population of all children taking lessons on a given day. You know, that would be a sample because it's a specific, it's a part of all of them. Um, this one here says the population is all the people taking snowboarding. No, because they want all children. And this is everybody. So this is if I took my first lesson. Um, the population is all people taking snow, uh, all people taking lessons on a given day. Again, that's a sample of everybody. They aren't interested in, you know, people over the age of 12. They only are looking for people who are between the ages of, you know, or 12 and under. What is their age? So they they don't want adults, you know, or 15 and under, or whatever they decided that a child is. So that's why this is that population. This is a population. This is a population. This is a population. Um, but they're in the population that they're looking for. This is a sample of this population. So that's things you have to think about. You know, what is it we're looking at? Um, a sample is just a smaller part of the population. So here, um, a, it's, like I said, a sample is a group. We can sample different ways. You know, we could find, take all the list of all the kids who've taken um, snowboarding lessons and then stratify them into uh, male and female, um, whatever uh, group we want to put them in, and then take pieces of that. We could just randomly select things. We might want to make sure that we get all ages. So we take a sample from each age, you know, each year, you know, one, two, three, four, five, all the way up to whatever we're looking for. But there's going to be samples of those. It's just a smaller piece of that. A parameter is um, if we did statistics, if we did find the average or the um, anything about the entire group, 
from the population. We look, we talk more about statistics because they make more sense, but a parameter is if we do the mean, median, mode, standard deviations of the population. The statistics are the mean, median, mode, standard deviation of the sample. Does that make sense? That's, I think, the most, maybe one of the more confusing things. Okay. At least one person gets it, so that's good. <coughs> My job is done. And that's the big difference between this is has to do with the um, average. In this case, they're looking at average, so the average age of the population. And this is the average age of the group. The variable is the thing that you're really working on. It's going to change. It's still a variable in just as it is in X in algebra. It's the unknown thing. Okay. Um, and then when we get answers to it, that becomes data. So data are the things that answer, that fill in the variable. Okay. So because the air variable is age, the data has to be an age. It's not how many lessons they took. It's not how many children were there. It's not the time that they spent. It's how old are they. Okay, so data is, all of these are data, but they're not the data that this is, that they're looking for, for to answer the variable, to answer, figure out the statistic, to then be able to estimate the parameter. Okay, so data is always, um, has to be, fill in the piece that you're really looking for in this case. So they just want to know what would data be for that. And question two is exactly the same. So I'm not going to do that. Um, question three is also the same. You know, they want to know, well, what, you know, they're just looking at one part of it. What is this thing? Is it a population? Is it a variable? Is it data or is it a statistic? So if they ask the question about that, and set question four is also the same. So one through four are all related. There, what is data? What is a population? What is a variable? What is a statistic? What is a parameter? They want to know: Can you figure those pieces out? And you have ten tries to get a four-question multiple-choice answer. Yes, I realize that seems silly, but um, I can only do. Uh, by question, how many options, how many chances do you get? And since a lot of these have, um, since many of them have, you know, fill in the blank where you're doing numbers, and then the rest are multiple choice, I can't just say, you know, you have two chances on multiple choice. No, you have to have either one chance on everything, two chances on everything, or how many ever chances on every question. So I give you plenty of time chances to type in something because a lot of times you may type in the wrong number. You know, or you may have done it wrong, and I want you to be able to keep doing it um, until you get it right. So, even if you're not sure if it's between these two things, you could choose both and still get the correct answer. Um, so, here, what they want to know, you know, what kind of data are we looking at? And there are, there's, well, they have three here, there's more than that. Um, but the, the two big types of data are qualitative and quantitative. Um, usually I would ask people, do they know the difference? Oh, that's a question. Uh, oh, OK. Um, do people know the difference between qualitative and quantitative? Yeah, I think so. So I know qualitative kind of sounds like quality, and yeah. quantitative, it sounds like um, quantity, so it's more so counting. Correct. That's that's how we, that's why they put it there. And um, the, yeah, it's very easy. They're, they're, they look exactly the same. So um, uh, I, one of my many statistics and classes that I had, um, I rushed through a quiz, a, a four question quiz. Two of the questions were what is qualitative statistics and what is quantitative data? And I didn't read them correctly. So I put perfect answers to the wrong questions, you know, because it's really kind of like 
one or two, just a couple of letters that are different in them. Um, and they both begin with QUA. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, qualitative is qualities. So whether it's the color of your eyes or, um, you know, we're putting into groups. So what race are you? What gender are you? If we look at age as groups, that could be a qualitative part. You know, are you a senior citizen? Are you a teenager? Are you middle-aged? Are you a child? You know, we're not putting numbers in it. We're putting you into sections based upon how old you might be. Um, whereas quantitative is numbers. So in that case, we care about the number of how old you are. It, you still may be in groups, but it might be, you know, 15 to 20 and 21 to 25. And so then we take the, with those cases, we can still do math with that because we know how many are in this group and what the middle is. So we take, the, we just assume that, you know, you may range through that whole section. So we take a number and say, okay, this is what we're going to put as that group. So we can still do math, even if it's in um, what they call a histogram, you know, where you have a bin of values. Um, so it doesn't have to be perfect, but it can give you information. So that's what quantitative is. It, it's always going to be um, measurable or countable. Um, now, the difference between continuous and discrete is discrete is counting numbers. There are no halves. So when I ask how many children you have or how many televisions you have, you don't have two and a half. Like there's no part of a I mean, you may have a broken TV, and you're like, well, gee, do I count that as a whole TV? Um, but you either it's either a TV or it isn't, even if it's working. <laughs> um, it's a child or it isn't, you know, and it's a bug or it isn't. It's a dozen eggs. You know, there was, you don't get parts of those things. Um, whereas continuous would be measuring. So weight, height, age, while we only talk about I'm... 25, you're really 25, or some of you are like, well, I'm almost 17. So almost 17 means that you're not quite 17. So you're 16 and 10 months and four days and 13 hours and seven minutes. You know, you're you're almost to that point. So we know we understand that age kind of lives in that continuous realm, but we just usually only care about the the num the big number at the front. So it looks discrete but it's really not. You know, same thing with height. I may ask you how tall you are and you're like, I'm five foot 10, but there's really kind of wiggle room. You know, you're really probably parts of that 10, you know, either below or above. It's just that it's close enough that, you know, we don't deal with the parts of inches, you know. Um, uh, weight, you know, same thing. We're 142 pounds, but there's, ounces that go along with that and there's parts of ounces that go along with that so but we usually only look at the part the big number you know same thing with how much money do you have or how much money do you earn all those things we usually look at the big the whole number part and we don't really care about the stuff at the end um, because who really worried about you know a couple of cents <laughs> um, but those so but it is so it is continuous but because it has that part um, but so those are things that you have to think about, you know, when they, you are asked about things, you know, is it a continuous value or is it a um, discrete value? And so that's what uh, five, six are about. Chapter seven looks at, I mean, sorry, chapter seven, problem seven. And notice we haven't done any math yet. We've done, there's gone through six problems and there's been zero math. You haven't taken a calculator out. You haven't even looked at your fingers yet. Um, and there was only one question with some numbers or two questions, you know, this one here, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and this one here. There were uh, some numbers in there, but you didn't do anything with them. That doesn't happen after this chapter, but this chapter is pretty quick and, um, so I'll skip seven for a second. Uh, chapter and question eight has to do with the types of uh, sampling. You know, what are they? Are they, is it convenience? Is it, that's funny, they have convenience there twice. 
oops, that was a mistake. Is it simple, random? Is it cluster? Is it stratified? Is it systematic? Or is it uh, convenience? And you need to be able to look at those things. Most of them are fairly easy to figure out, um, except for cluster and stratified. <laughs> I can never keep them straight. Um, like I said, this is the only time you're going to be asked about them at all. Oh, and chapter one isn't even on the test. I don't even bother asking any questions about it because it's um, kind of a um, pointless chapter. They, this stuff here gets talked about again in chapter two, so I don't have to worry about it. I'm ne we're not going to, yeah, I'm going to assume because after chapter one, we only talk about simple random samples. So it gets forgotten fairly quickly. Um, so stratified and cluster, you're breaking things up into groups and then either taking um, parts from each group or you're taking an entire group. And I can never remember which one it is. Um, so here, uh, cluster, she breaks them up into rows and she selects two rows. That's why they're clustered. That she took the cluster of the entire of that row, whereas stratified, she would have broken them up into rows and then taken a couple people from each row. That would have been a stratified sa uh, sample of this same problem. Um, here, our marketing manager, they look at the chains um, over the next two weeks at each store. So they look at each store. And they take 100 people, 100 sales from each store. So that's why it's stratified. They're looking at each strata, each group, and saying, I want to find some information about that. If it had been a cluster, they would have taken all of the stuff from a couple of stores. So that's the big difference between the two. Does that make any sense? Boom, boom, boom. Oh. Yep. Okay, good. <laughs> does. The that it also, it also. Yeah, it, it's it's the like it's the kind of the most confusing thing, and I like always seem to mess it up and get it backwards um, when I talk about it. So it's easier for me to just have it here and explain them. Um, and that's why I had that video from the um, um, from this guy here. Uh, because he kind of shows you how it works, <coughs> how the clustering and the stratified work, you know, how we tick people from each thing. Um, somebody also asked a question about uh, replacement. So replacement would mean that you can ask the same person over and over again. Um, they go Once you ask them, they go back into the sample and they might get called again. It really doesn't make a lot of sense for most things. Um, especially if you're asking like people, you know, like they would get really annoyed if you called them four times for the same uh, sample for the same survey. Um, but you know, you would, you know, you can ask them for different surveys. So those are different, but that's a different thing that you have a whole new sample. If you're um, the only place I could see, uh, if you already had all the data collected, and you're like, well, you know, maybe it's important important to put it back in. Um, so let's say you were looking at, um, I can't even think of a place where putting replacement in would be useful. Uh, I talked about, I gave an example of dice rolls, you know, um, but each one is its own sample still. So, but you don't take that number out. You know, if you're rolling a dice, you know, you want to be able to have a six <laughs> over and over again. Um, but most cases when you're doing you know surveying or data collection you probably you're most likely just taking that piece out um i do have a uh couple of samples i do with um, my high school students where um like it's long groups of data i mean yeah you could one's house sales you could just leave it back in there and pull it back out again to see that price and that information. But, you know, why? You can get a new one, you know, get some more information about it. Um, 
but houses do sell more than once, so that could be why uh, you get that. You'd want that, but it would be, be still be the same data point at each time. So it could kind of skew your, your data a little bit, and you don't want that. All right. Um, so seven here asks about why things are bad. So we have a um, airline. They're looking at how many babies are on flights so that they can make sure they have enough uh, baby seats, uh, which never happens, um, or I guess safety equipment, so uh, uh, life preservers <coughs> would probably be there. Um, and they look at Thanksgiving weekend. They take six flights. They go from Boston to Salt Lake City. And they are going to use that to determine how many babies are on all their flights. And they're like, well, why is this bad? And they give you some options. Um, it's a holiday weekend. Uh, it's not a true representation of population of air traveler. The survey uses systemic, systematic sampling. They only chose six flights. That's a stratified sample. And the survey was conducted in six similar flights. Well, um, what do we know about travelers on Thanksgiving weekend? A lot of people are traveling. Families. They're, right, they're families. Okay. What are most people who are flying planes? Like, what are what are most passengers? What do you mean? Who are the most common uh, passengers on planes? Are they families? No. Usually individuals. Individuals going for what? Business. Business, right. So most people are business travelers. So if you look at a Thanksgiving weekend, are there business travelers on Thanksgiving weekend? Probably I not. Mean, that's probably a couple, but it's mostly families. So we are looking at the completely wrong group of people. <laughs> you know, the, the flights don't represent what you should be flying. Okay, so that's one problem with that sample is that it's not representative. You know, most of your uh, people flying on your planes are probably businessmen and businesswomen. And here we have, you know, families. And um, what do we know about Salt Lake City? Anybody know where Salt Lake City is? Utah. It's in Utah. What do we know about Utah? Dry and desert. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Um, who, what group of people, uh, what religious group of people live in Utah? Uh, Mormons. Mormons. What do we about to know about Mormons? <laughs> Marry many wives and have a lot of kids. They have big families, yes. So not only are we looking at you know family of travelers, we're looking at really large family travelers. <laughs> um, so it's even worse. You know, and they're all coming from Boston, which also tend to have large families, right? Like that, that one of the things we think about, like Boston, you know. So, so they're going to Utah, which you know has large families. They're coming from Boston, which tended to have large families. So um, it, it's really not representative. So it's, it's horribly wrong in that place. And so that's where this comes out as a bad thing, all right? Um, they didn't represent based on the fact that um, it's a holiday weekend and it didn't look at all of the, the days. Um, they're the same six flights, basically. Because it's six flights going from the same city. At least if they'd gone to you know a couple of different cities, they may have gotten a, some different results. But no, they took the six flights that go from Boston to Salt Lake. So they're exactly the same flight. And because of these two things, it's not representative of normal population travelers. Okay, if they'd looked at Boston to Salt Lake, but they did it for you know two weeks, you know every they did every Thursday for the for the last two months. At least they would get different results. They'd look and go, oh, well, you know, oh, we have a big spike here at Thanksgiving. 
okay, so maybe we make sure we have a lot of um, baby safety equipment on that week, but every other week seems that we don't seem to have any children. So we probably don't need it all the time, but we do need, we will need some during vacate during high holiday season. So maybe Christmas, you know, Thanksgiving, uh, you know, any other big family vacation holidays that might occur, we probably should have that stuff available, but we probably don't need it the rest of the time. So they want to make sure that they're looking at good data. You're collecting good data. And so this is a really good example of really bad data collection. <laughs> and then part B says, well, how can we fix it? So what are things that they could do to have fixed this? Uh, kind of like you said, have flights to different cities or different places. Yeah, I mean, any there's there's so many things that they could do. You know, take different even if it's the same time, but they do different places. They do different you know flights. They you know I think one of the questions asks you know how many kids do you have? Um, right, they did a regular week. You know, different time. So there's all kinds of things that they could do, and then they just ask you to find three of them. There's like they give you five choices and you have to pick three of them. Okay, so that's one thing to notice is that this is a checkbox. So there's going to be there could be more than one answer. This is a radio dial. Like if I change my answer, only one answer is selected. Here I can have more than one thing, and it won't tell you it's correct unless you have all three of them. But if I did all five of them, it would tell me it's wrong. <laughs> so. Um, Make sure that so you can have more than one. It doesn't tell you how many. It just says select all of them that apply. Okay, so that's why you know you want to make sure you you can look to see did I get this right or wrong. Okay, and then the last question only has a little bit of math. All right. Um, this is about frequency, relative frequency, and cumulative relative frequency. So frequencies are just how many things happened of that stuff. So we had 50 students, and they asked how many courses they took. All right. So frequency would just be, you know, I got so many people that said 15, so many people, uh, so many people said one, so many people said two, so many people said three. And whatever results I had, they could have, you know, go all the way down to like, part time. I guess you can't have more than three, because um, then at four and five, you become a full time student. So that's just how many people answered the question in what group frequency is. All right. Usually when we're doing it, um, where's. Do, 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 do. No, I want to. I wanted to do, where's the share? Oh, share. Um, whiteboard. So, pencil. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. Um, okay. So, there's only a few of us here. Um, I'm going to ask each of you. All right. Lucy, how many TVs do you have in your house? Three, I think. Three. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay, <laughs> good. Uh, Cooper, how many TVs do you have? Two. Um, Angelica, how many TVs do you have? Four. Four. Um, Beatrice, how many TVs do you have in your house? Two. Two. Brown, how many TVs do you have in your house? I have one. One, okay. Um, Felicia, how many TVs do you have in your house? Two. Um, Waverly, I think that's the cool name, I gotta tell you. How many names do you have in your house? Uh, how many names? How many <laughs> TVs do you have in your house? Four and thank you. Okay. And last but not least, Vanessa, how many TVs do you have in your house? 
Um, two. Two. Okay. So if we were so that's how we do a frequency chart. We look. We just kind of do hash marks and go. Okay. How many did I get? So I have one here. I have four. I have one, and I have two. And so out of the eight, I can now do relative frequencies. So relative frequencies aren't useful because I can't really compare them from one group to the next because I don't necessarily know that I'm going to have only eight respondents. You know, um, I want to. So relative frequencies allow me to find percentages or fractions. So this is relative frequency. It's one out of eight. This is four out of eight. We don't even have to reduce them. One out of eight. And two out of eight. So I can leave them as fractions, or I can turn them into decimals. Um, or percentages, 12.5. Fifty percent. Twelve point five percent and twenty five percent. Now, what might have happened is I might have rounded these to thirteen percent. So let's say instead of I didn't want to do that. And of course, there's no way to remove. So I had, I didn't think it would erase everything. So I had 12.5, which is about 13%. Should we always be rounding? It all depends. You um, Like, this wouldn't make any sense because it comes out nicely. But if you have, if you were doing sevenths, you probably went around because like sevenths has a long decimal, you know, so you probably would round at one decimal place or two decimal places just to have, uh, so it doesn't continue on forever. Um, you know, it, so we had one, we had two, we had three, we had four. This was four out of eight. So this comes out like this one comes out nicely, so you don't really have to round because it's 12.5%. But if, it, like I said, this had been uh, one seventh, then it would be, um, you know, 14.756. It goes to six decimal places and then repeats. So it's not as clean and nice. Um, so we don't really like that. Uh, we would we would have rounded this, but if I round this to 13, and this is 50, and this was 13, and this was 25. The cumulative relative frequencies are 13. You're just adding up everything that's that or below. 63, 76, and 101. So notice it comes out a little more than 100 because we rounded these two. Whereas if I didn't round them, it would come out to exactly 100. So this is like it looks weird. And we're like, well, something's wrong. And then we realize, oh, it was just rounding. OK, we rounded this here. We probably shouldn't have. Um, but it's OK. So when I say it might come out not might not exactly come out to 1, this is where that happens. When you round and both things get rounded up then you round up. If you round both things round down, excuse me, like if you're dividing by thirds, everything gets rounded down, then you end up with 0.99 and so or 99%. And so you realize, oh well okay, that's also a rounding error. You know, um and that's understandable. Both of them are understandable. But if you get like 132% here, you know something went really wrong. <laughs> You know, so you can have little errors, like little, be off a little bit just because of rounding. Um, even though the rounding is correct, it 
makes it look wrong when you get to how many total things happened. And it's under that's understandable, but you just put at the end rounding error, <laughs> you know, um, and everybody understands that, you know, or if you had, um, but as if you don't do that, then people are like, well, why'd you get 101? And they, because they only see these things here, they're like, well, that doesn't make any sense. But if they'd seen the original numbers, they could see where that came from. So those are things to to look at. You know, you might want to have explanations when things don't come out the way that you think that they should. Okay, why did this happen? Because we just rounded to the ones place. You know, if I had gone to tenths, then this would have been fine. And so that's those are things you want to make sure that uh, you look at. And so here, that's all they're doing. They're finding the frequency is the counts. The relative frequency is just, you know, in this case, they want a decimal, but you could have it as a fraction. They would just want the part because relative frequencies we can compare. So I can look at this and now I can look at another class, you know, that had, you know, seven and two and five and one, and I can compare their percentages and go, oh, well, this class has the same percent of, you know, uh, same percent of students have two TVs in both classes. So that's probably, you know, the most popular um, number, you know, whereas um, the count may be higher in other places. All right. And that's all we're trying to do with relative frequency is allow us to be able to count them so we can compare them to another group. All right. Um, and it just works out that way. It just makes life easier, you know, to be able to, to look at the right things. <coughs> because we want to look at year to year or we want to look at um, – you know, growth, or we want to look at all these things, but you know, we see giant numbers, and then we realize the percentages are much smaller. So those are things. So sometimes you want to look at the counts, sometimes you want to look at the percentages, because let's say you've had uh, growth. Uh, it's funny they they sent out a um, uh, the percent of people taking online classes, you know, and versus face to face classes, and the growth in those things. Well, they forced all the classes to be online. So we went from, you know, 15 to, you know, 17% of classes, you know, students taking online classes to 96% of the students taking online classes. And they're like, wow, look at this growth. And then, but they didn't put factor in the fact that nobody's coming to, that we said, they told us every class is going to be online except for labs, <laughs> you know, so, but they're like touting this giant growth and they're like, well, it makes no sense to be touting that because you forced that as a thing. It wasn't like, you know, students had a choice to take an online class or not. They were going to, if they're going to take a class, it was going to be online. Um, so it's kind of when they do stuff like that. All right, so getting back to this. Uh, so these numbers here have to add up to the 50. So I have 15 plus 15 is 30. Oh, and so when we're doing these problems, the, the numbers in black are the same for everybody. The numbers in red are not. Like they're randomly assigned. Could you go back to that screen? Because you're still on the chalkboard, the whiteboard. Oh, weird. Um, Huh. How did that happen? Oh, I know I because I'm not sharing my screen. I'm sharing my application. Uh, share application. I forgot I had to, to, to tell you that to tell the thing I was doing that. OK, so if you ha in um, WebAssign, if you see the black numbers, everybody has those the same. The red numbers are assigned randomly. So these frequencies are random. You may have the same numbers as me. You may not. Um, just be aware of that. So don't, whenever you see red numbers, <laughs> don't just copy down what I've done, which is usually how people get the wrong answer the first time. Um, they're just following along, and they just type in whatever I type in. And then they're like, why did I get this wrong? And then I'm like, because you don't have the same numbers I do. And they're like, oh, yeah. And then they go on and, and get them right. So. Um, 
So because this has to add up to 50, I have 15 and 15 is 30, and that's where they get this 20 from um, because that's how many are left out of the 50. And then the relative frequency is just 15 divided by 50. 15 divided by 50. I don't have to put it in decimal form. 20 divided by 50. I'm just submitting it so you can see that you, if you just put it in, in a fraction, it's okay with that. <coughs> and then um, when we add them up, cumulative just means add up. So as we're adding up, this is all there is, is 0.3. Cumulative of this one is this plus this. So 0.3 plus 0.3. Cumulative of this one is everything. 0.3 plus 0.3 plus 0.4. So that's why that's a 1. But if, like I said, if these had been rounded to 0 0.33, 0 0.33, and 0.46, you know, or whatever, then it would have come out, or point, I guess, 0 0.33, 0 0.33, uh, then they would, this would have come out as 0.99 and not been right. Like it wouldn't have come up as 1. Um, so even though it should be 100%. Um, and then they ask us about the frequencies and relative frequencies. Um, so what percent of students take exactly two classes? So exactly means equals. And so that's why it's this one is relative frequency value. Whereas um, one or two, they also like to put in stuff like less than three or two or less, um, uh, at least two, at most two. Um, they'll reword this a whole bunch of ways. Um, you just need to know what at least means, what at most means. Um, so. So at least is greater than or equal to. Maybe we're going to make these bigger. That's not. Most is less than or equal to. And then obviously less than, greater than, um, exactly. Equal to. So those are things you have to look at. Um, which what are they asking us? Okay. Um, when so converting English to math is you know not always easy. So make sure that you know those um, because they're gonna you're gonna see them a lot. Um, and they get they like because we think of le we see least and we think less, which is wrong because least is the bottom number and then it's from that bottom number up. Whereas, and at most, we think of, oh, that sounds like more than, but it's really the opposite. It's, you know, that num most is the highest number, and we want everything less than that, okay? So those are three common things you're going to see in statistics that they're going to ask you about, and um, they're going to, you, you may confuse them. So just make sure that you remember what these are. Um, and then there's between, which is... Obviously, you know, between means um, is greater than one thing, but less than something else. So it's greater than that number, but it's less than the number next to it and the other number. So, um, and when we're looking at discrete or um, continuous, they become different things. So all of these are, so when we deal with continuous numbers, less than, is the same as less than or equal to because you can't really get the less than value. But in discrete, you can f tell people what the less than value is. You know, what's the number less than four? 
you know, well, I know that's three. But if it's continuous, the number that's less than four is three point nine 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 nine
I think his battery died. Yeah, I'm gonna wait though, because class is until 12. Wait, is this class three hours? Anyone know? Nine to eleven forty-five. Oh, okay. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, three hours, basically. Yeah. All right, sorry about that. Um, I apparently closed my browser <laughs> in the middle of my talking. Uh, uh, but I'm glad you all are still here. All right, um, so let me go back just to this class. Since we have a little time left, um, what happened? So here's some data. What is the whiteboard? What is it? You're on the whiteboard. Oh, I'm on the whiteboard, which is weird. Thank you. <laughs> All right, now I'm back. So what happened? We have this data. It has other, high, middle, low uh, totals, uh, males, adults, females, adults, some yeses and nos, children, males and females, yeses and nos, and totals. So what is this? It's a survival chart. It is a survival chart. 
Yes, some people survived. So people died. So that's good. It's in chapter one. So I, I'm going to keep this up because I know a lot of people have chats going. Um, but it's in chapter one. So what is it? You know, we have no's. So which do you think is survived? Yes or no? Anyone? There's no wrong answers. Well, there is, but it's okay. Yes, yes, correct. Um, so yeses are the people who survived. So we can see lots of people didn't survive in total. All right. Um, lots of these others didn't survive. Um, lots of these lowers didn't survive. Okay, actually we can see lots of men didn't survive in general, but lots of women did survive. So does that, and we look at kids, it's kind of 50-50. But notice there are no other kids and there's very few, you know, high and middle kids. So, but lots of low kids. So what, why might that have been? As far as the kids, maybe they don't know how to swim. I don't okay, know so, what the circumstances were. <laughs> okay, they went, actually that's a useful thing. They they don't know how to swim. Swimming is important in this. Yes. But why were there then be no others for kids? So what I are other the age range? So that's like geriatric? Um, nope. Nope. They're not because they're okay. not, it has, it's not, has the, these don't have to do with age. Okay. Any guesses from those of you who uh, are in the, that just want to chat? Gender? What was that? Transgender? Nope. Nope, it's not because others they had males and females. So, so why did males not survive and but females did? What's something that males might not have survived, but in large quantities, but females tended to survive in? Especially notice here in the high group, almost all of the high women survived. Almost all of the middle women survived. And same with children. Anybody who was in the high or middle survived, but when they were in the low group, they didn't. Uh, males were trying to help out the women. Yes, they were. Where were they helping out the women? And children. The Titanic. Yes, it is the Titanic. Yep. This is the Titanic. This is the survival rates of the Titanic, which is actually pretty good. You got this on like the first guess as to what it might be. People start figuring out that it's deaths and then start thinking diseases, plane crashes, and then they finally get to uh, boating accidents. And then once that happens and they realize it's the Titanic. Um, but yeah, so. Um, other, notice women in the other group pretty much survived. That's because those were, made, were um, uh, maids to the high class. So if you were in the higher decks, you got off. Well, you, you say you, were, you survived. Whereas if you were a male, um, most likely you were working in the um, furnace rooms, the ovens, the kit, you know, the kitchens, the, the servants, you were dealing with lower, you were in lower classes, you did not survive. The lower levels were the people who were traveling to America to live here. Um, they tended to be on the lower decks and they did not, you know, survive. Whereas people on the higher decks, 
did. The males helped the females. They made sure the women get on, women and children got on first. So on all the lifeboats. So that's why, you know, even if you were on the, if you were a high uh, class, you know, you were in the higher classes, you didn't get on the boats until the women, you saw that the women were on the boats. So that is where all those um, statistics come from. So good job. Um, it's only 1030, but um, I don't have anything else to tell you, I don't think. Um, um, if there's any questions, more, I'm not filming this part. Um, because I've already filmed it. And I'm just going to go back. Oh, I guess I still am filming. I'm, I'm, no, I'm sharing. Oh, it's recording still. Excellent. Um, so I don't have anything else to, to tell you unless you have some questions. How did this go for you guys as a whole for the first day um, in online learning? Um, in statistics, I like I. It's a. This is only the second semester I've taught in this format. Um, good. Okay. Um, good so far. Excellent. You're all doing well. Um, like I said, if you have questions, send me an email. I will get back to you. Um, and um, I hope to learn more about all of you uh, at some point as we go through the semester um, and maybe hear some voices. You know. um, so I guess that's everything. I will see you next week at uh, 9 a.m. Uh, we have to find out where the rest of the your, the rest of the class is. Like, did they forget that they were coming here? I don't know. I'm going to send them an email because, like, I have to do DNs by Friday, which means that if you didn't show up to class, you didn't. I could drop them, but like they did at least some work, so I'm going to continue on and assume that they're going to be coming in. They just didn't realize they were supposed to come in today, so I'll send out an email reminding them. Um, and I'll, you'll be on it too, but I know you will all be here next week because you were here this week. So, um, But I'll just send out that reminder that we have to show up to class. So, Oh, there's a, another chat room? OK. Um, uh, we tried to help them out. <laughs> Let's see. In collaborate. Oh, this force. Uh, this one. Uh, lock it there. Now, no one can get in there. <laughs> there. Um, Uh, try to help them out, but I guess I didn't get through. Okay, so I will send out a picture that, this, that they can't get in there now. It's only in weekly ca class meetings. I mean, I, I thought that was labeled fairly well, so people would figure that out. I, that's where we should go. Apparently, I was wrong. Um, but I will uh, send out an email. You guys can ignore it because you know where you're supposed to be. And I will see you next week. All right. Thank you. Professor. See you next Saturday. See you next Saturday. You guys all have a good week. Enjoy the enjoy the beautiful day outside. I think we're going apple picking. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. All right. <laughs>